All right, so we're hearing uh, threats from Eric Holder, basically saying if Prop 19 passes, he's gonna. He's been writing letters to the former DEA agents and everyone talking about how he's so anti-marijuana and saying we're going to vigorously enforce these federal laws. And I'm wondering why haven't we been doing that already? You know, where's the DEA been? It's a Schedule 1 drug. There is no accepted medical use. So people are breaking the law. Why haven't they been doing anything about that? Okay, so they've been allowing these so-called medical dispensaries to operate, which is technically illegal. That's been going on for a few years. Nobody's said anything about it so far. So why are they deciding now to enforce it? I guess because it's recreational and now people are starting to acknowledge the issue. And the funny thing is when you hear um, the DEA on TV or any type of newscast arguing about this and we bring up the issue of people in prison and you can go to the Department of Correct Corrections website the, and they have a breakdown of uh, the types of crimes and drug crimes are in the high 40s. It's almost half the people are in jail because of drug crimes and it's so screwed up because when you hear the DEA argue about it they downplay it they say oh it's only one percent you know so basically they're saying they're not properly enforcing the laws is what they're saying so I don't know do they not have the resources or do they not really want pot illegal or at least what I can say for sure is they're not fully against it because in some way they're profiting from it and people who say the DEA will not exist after pot becomes legalized are not looking at the whole story because no matter what product you have whether it's tobacco whether it's alcohol there, there's always a black market for it there's always people who are going to break the law so the DEA will exist for that type of thing and all the other drugs on the street as well so they're not really losing their job if pot becomes legal in fact if anything their budgets might be increased to deal with all the regulation and um, people trying to find loopholes etc so that's a myth the real problem is is that the government DEA all these people they know the facts they know exactly what they are um, They've done numerous medical studies on that. I mean, these people aren't stupid, and they're also, I don't think, that closed-minded. I really think a lot of them know the truth, and they're just trying to avoid it. They're trying to dodge those questions. They're just trying to ignore it, because in some way, they're benefiting from it. It's the only situation I can think of where a fairly large segment of the population are crying out wanting this, wanting a substance to be legalized so they can pay tax on it. Like, come on. You know, like, there's so many arguments for it and there's so much evidence for it that the people who are against it you know, they can see the facts, they can see the information, um, they've had years and years to disseminate it and go through everything. So it's not even a ma matter of their closed mindedness, they're just, somebody's benefiting from this. And we don't know how because it's also in the illicit market. Something's happening behind closed doors and it's not right. We just want the doors to be open, and people just want to have that basic freedom. And I think that's that's a good thing. People want to pay tax, and they want to be legitimate about this. It's good. It's a great thing. It's something we should celebrate, especially when the 
when the downside is very small and the benefits are huge. The benefits far, far outweigh any neg negative parts about this whole legalization issue. So the real problem I have is that they're not properly enforcing the laws. This this threat by Eric Holder, it, it's, I don't buy it. I mean, I, I think there will be a crackdown there, but this is going on all over the United States. So why they're letting this happen, uh, like I said before, they must be benefiting from it somehow. And maybe they really don't have the resources to get everyone, so they get a few people here and there. And a lot of people call that selective enforcement, and I, I think that's just the worst thing. You know, I think we'd actually have a better situation if everybody was treated equally and dealt with equally instead of just getting a few people here and there. Um, some people getting very light sentences and some people being made an example of and getting very harsh sentences. So this is complete nonsense. So my prediction for Prop 19 is I honestly don't think it will pass. I think it's going to lose by a very, very small amount, maybe 48, 52, something like that. V very, very close numbers. What I do think it's going to do is it's going to bring in the largest percentage or even quantity of young voters in the history of California and possibly the history of the United States. And it is going to cause politicians to wake up and see that this is a mainstream issue. And not only that, but also see that this carries a lot of political power. And it's possible that there could be some electoral election fraud going on. There could be something like that as well happening. I, I could see that being an issue since this is something that involves real change. You know, change we really need, not not the Obama brand of change. Um, so it's possible that there's going to be something ridiculous like that. Somebody's going to try to manipulate the election. Honestly, I don't think that that will even be necessary. But the thing is that we know is this is not going to be the last time this issue comes up. It's already on the ballot for several other states. So it's hard to say what will happen. It, it could very well pass. I think if it does pass and Obama decides to do this crackdown with the DEA and, and go all um, police state on this issue, he will not get reelected. Um, his approval rating will sink to an all-time low if he does that. <clears throat> However, I feel that if he gives California the go-ahead on this, that his approval rating is going to go through the roof and it's going to bring a sense of optimism across the country. Unfortunately, based on what we've seen of Obama, um, he's just a rebranded Bush, so I don't think that's going to happen. He is doing a speech or going to California sometime at the end of this week. So that will be mid-October for those of you. Um, so we'll have to see what he says during that speech. But it's going to stir up a lot of people. And the best thing is is that for the anti-marijuana people, it's win-lose. It either they win if it doesn't get passed and things stay the way they are, or they lose and things actually change. And as we've seen with this prohibition, when, when something gets passed into law or something happens, it's a lot harder to get it repealed. But the best thing is for the, um, for the pro-pot people, this is a win-win situation. It's already on the ballot. It's already gaining huge support. Um, if it doesn't pass, people are going to get pissed off, and they're going to bring it up again sometime in the future. may take four or five years may take a few elections, but it will come up. 
and the same issue will come up um, in state after state after state. And eventually, probability shows it's going to pass at some point. Um, politicians even, say in the last year, are, are starting to speak up against this. And current politicians too, not former politicians, not former DEAs. Um, current politicians are standing up for this because the average Joe is standing up for this and uh, just wants to be legitimate. And this is one of the few situations where people want to pay tax. So there's just so many more. It seems like every day there's another argument on the for side. And the for side is getting a lot bigger than the against side. It's going to happen. I can see it happening. Like I said, it might take years, but the momentum's already building. We can't stop it now at this point, even if we wanted to try.